Hey guys, Christopher Marlowe, once again, in front of your face. I wanted to talk about a concept that's been around for a little while now. It's It's been, or it was popularized, maybe even kind of invented in this in this sort of context by Drake's producer, Noah Shabib, aka 40. Uh, it's called various things, the underwater effect, lo-fi effect, low-pass effect, stuff like that. But Noah Shabib himself is on the record as saying that he uses a, a plugin called Avid Lo-Fi inside of Pro Tools. It's like a stock plugin. And I'm not a Pro Tools user, so I'm always thinking of ways to do things inside of Reaper, which doesn't always have things in plain view. Um, definitely not this, I don't think. But over the months and years, I've kind of come across various ways that people have tried to mimic this sort of uh, Lo-Fi effect. And it's where he just sort of lops off all the high frequencies above a certain point. And that's to make room for like Drake's voice, for example. And it's a very sort of distinctive kind of filtered sound because it's not harsh, it's not like resonant, but it's it's very uh, in, very kind of intense and it kind of gives it an old sort of sample vibe almost. So I just want to run through a few of these ways that I've encountered and, and kind of show you my, at, uh, after a couple of these, my, my favorite way of doing it which isn't in Reaper at all, actually. Uh, so this first one is, is called Air Lo-Fi. And for a while, I thought, well, this is probably the closest I can get to this, this sort of sound, this, this uh, lo-fi effect, low-pass effect in terms of a plugin, because the Air Music Technology people famously sort of also made the, originally made the uh, a lot of the stock Pro Tools plugins, including, I believe, the lo-fi plugin that Forti uses. So this is what it sounds like. Um, if I, I have the anti-alias on and the post turned all the way down so if we just turn the sample right down oh let me just play the sample for you first it's just a loop with a lot of kind of high frequency content This is what turning down the sample rate sounds like with the aliasing turned down on the, the post. So at first blush, yeah, that's basically what you want. It's like a sample rate reduction, but there's no aliasing distortion um, like this. This kind of thing. Your classic kind of crunchy uh, old digital sound in a lot of lo-fi plugins. Oh, and also you can turn the pre down to To me, this becomes even more kind of harsh, but it's still a little bit harsh even with this pre turned all the way up. Um, like a resonant filter almost. So that that's that's one option. To me, it's not ideal just because of kind of the, the, the harshness at that cutoff point, um, which leads me to the next thing that I've came across on like forums. This is called Time Machine by Tone Boosters. And this is, and you can also turn the aliasing down both on the pre and post, AKA the analog to digital and the digital to analog conversion. This is what that sounds like. So right away, I, I really, really like this this tone. I feel like it's very smooth and n not harsh at all. There is a bit of the aliasing sound, uh, distortion still in the, the audio, even when I've turned the aliasing all the way down. So it's it's just a matter of whether I am cool to have that sort of still in there, you know, which, uh, you know, might be the case, might not be. But that leads me to the th third way. I came across, uh, courtesy of this this fellow named uh, AJ. He has this this video, among other things. He talks about this this method of filtering where he'll actually drop an audio sample into Edison, which is the audio editor inside of FL Studio. And under the format option and under sample properties, you can change the sample rate, and then click resample over here, and 
that will just lop off all of the frequencies below the well not not below the frequency that you put here but but the frequency you put here divided by two you just want to keep that in mind so if you put 2000 hertz here under sample rate and you resample it inside of edison you will lop off all of the frequencies above 1000 hertz um that's just how uh sample rates work the idea here is that you can get a very sort of clean sound by actually re-rendering your audio and i thought well i must be able to do this in something other than fl studio because it seems like such a simple concept uh, reaper does have the ability to resample audio but not exactly in the way that that aj is 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 uh, doing in edison i found this audacity can do it basically exactly the same as what fl studio does you want to well, first install audacity i'll put the link in the description um and then you want to go to your preferences inside of reaper go all the way down to the bottom under external editors uh, you want to go add and then uh, either your primary or secondary. Uh, you just want to click browse, then find uh, Audacity, your installation, and then it'll be here. And then, okay, okay. And now, whenever you have an audio item, you can right click on it, open items in editor, open in Audacity. So, this is the fun part because now you just click on it and boom, now we have. <laughs> We have, uh, oh, no, we have uh, our audio. And then you just want to select this track. So you click over here, for example, it'll light up. And then you want to go up to the tracks menu, resample. Here we are. So if we resample it to uh, 2000 Hertz, now we just filtered out everything above 1000 Hertz. You can even do it more extremely, like uh, we can undo that and then Go up and go like 1000 hertz, for example. So now it'll lop up everything about 500 hertz. Now it's just very ambient, dark ambient sort of pad situation. For this demonstration, I stuck with the 2000 hertz. You might be wondering, why wouldn't you just want to do this in Reaper? Because what you can do is in Reaper, you have the uh, batch file converter, which is available under file, batch file item converter, or Command, Control, uh, Shift, F. And you can just uh, select an audio item and add select like, media items and go to all your options and then convert. And you, can, and you can also have it just go right to the source directory. So that would be, in this case, the project directory. Uh, and I've done that as well. <laughs> and I'll play you the two versions of, of how this turned out. So... Once again, the Audacity version is like this, at, at uh, 2K sample rate, or 2 kilohertz. And then this is the Reaper version. Now, I don't know if you're hearing what I'm hearing. <laughs> Um, but there is an extra tone in the Reaper version. And I've tried this with multiple sample, different samples with this Reaper method. I've also tried different sample rates, different resample modes. I've, I've used the extreme high quality one. I've, I've, um, I've gone down to 24 bit and used like one of the air windows dithers like this one. Uh, and no matter what I do, it always sounds like there's some extra tones in there. I don't know if it's like aliasing or ringing of some other sort or what, whatever else it could be. Um, I'm not, I'm not a technical uh, wizard with, with this sort of stuff, but that doesn't sound good <laughs> to me. It sounds out of tune. It's that, it's so bad. Um... It doesn't even sound it doesn't even sound over processed. It just sounds like there's extra there's like out of tune instruments or something. <laughs> Audacity just sounds like I would want it to sound. Which is, you know, good. 
cool. But it's not even, uh, you know, it doesn't even sound better than I would uh, expect Reaper to sound. It's just, I'm just sort of um, disappointed that Reaper doesn't, doesn't sound good in that way. You can try it for yourself, and if you get a different result, then let me do let me know, because I'm always interested if you guys have different results than I do. But I was thinking about brick wall filtering, and I wanted to share one more method for doing this with with you. Um, this is actually inside of Reaper. We have this equal, well, this processing plugin called Reefer. Uh, <laughs> Reefer Madness, and here's what you do. So you go to points, make it points flat, and then you can just drag these around. You can't you can't uh, type in the number, which is sort of disappointing. But that's about a thousand hertz. Or drag the other point down. And <laughs> like you know, try doing this in re EQ, right? Like. There's no way. There's no way. And this is only going, going down to about 90 decibels. This is what that sounds like. Um, yeah. And if we compare that to Audacity. That's way closer than I was expecting. Like that's, that's not, that's not too bad. The thing is, uh, it's not, I, don't think I don't necessarily think I would end up using this because even though it is very close I get a <laughs> A slight sense of something, like a slight, almost like war warbly quality or, or or watery quality, with the with the the refer, and it could just be my ears playing tricks on me. But uh, I mean, I I I don't think it is because because of what I know about FFT filters. Um, and if you didn't know, I, well, I don't really know what, how these work, but but I do know that they are, I believe, in MP3 encoding. So like if you, if you encode a very lossy MP3 file, like at a lower bit rate, you're going to be hearing this sort of spectral mm, filtering almost on, on the high end. Um, and it can make it sound very, very watery, and you can even try it for yourself encoding a very... A very low bitrate mp3 and it can sound cool sometimes but also sometimes it can sound a bit um just not musical and uh, so i mean you know it i guess that would it just would depend on you and your music if it doesn't need to be any better than, than this to me that's it's sort of the sound of of digital audio processing um and that's not necessarily a sound that i want um i do i feel like there's just, just a slight bit of of cleanliness or clarity in the in the audacity version but i mean that's just that's just me you might have a different a different feeling about that um one more uh sort of i guess maybe bonus uh tip um there's another air plugin called air, air spectral which i believe uses the same type of spectral filtering to get these tools here and and we have a a low pass and a high pass um, sounds like this. If we go to a thousand hertz. Right? And if we, we can A B them as well.
when I was listening before, I thought it sounded a little bit more plasticky or watery. The air spectral did. Again, that's that's up to you to decide for yourself. So anyway, yeah, I uh, hope you uh, enjoyed the content in this video. And if you did, then uh, you know leave a like. And uh, and uh, if you really liked it, then you can go ahead and subscribe to the channel. But uh, yeah, uh, I will see you guys in the next video. And uh, uh, peace.